Washington State punched their ticket to the big dance by winning the Sun Belt Conference. Now they get to play a more traditional college powerhouse. Number two seed, Cincinnati. Their head coach, Ron Hunter, has noticed the differences between the two programs. Say what? What college athletics should be about is what's happening at Georgia State. Not all this FBI stuff and all this other stuff. It's about these guys right here to eat at McDonald's. You know, the, you know, you know what they, they told us today? That Cincinnati gets to stay at the Hyatt. We got to stay at Comfort Inn. Cincinnati gets to eat at Ruth Chris. We got to eat at Wendy's. But when it comes Friday at 2 o'clock, oh, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready to play. And so I can guarantee you that. <laughs> CC, were you a Hyatt guy or a Comfort Inn guy back in the day? That's my homeboy. Yeah? We grew up together. I've been knowing him, man, since we were in high school. Very good basketball coach. Animated now. He puts on a show. In America, you should remember him. Yes. He was the guy who injured himself before the tournament a couple years ago, coached on that little cart. Yeah. With the, with with the, the cast cart, or a boot on. With a boot on. Yeah. And then his son, R.J. Hunter, who's bouncing around the NBA right now, R.J. hit the game-winning three, and he fell out of his little cart. Yeah. And so, I mean, so people remember him. They're back in the tournament. They had a big upset a few years ago. Yeah. Played college basketball at Miami of Ohio with one of his teammates, Chicago Bull, Los Angeles Laker, Ron Harper. Oh, yeah. Ron Hunter and Ron Harper. Absolutely. How about that? Those are my go. guys. He's a fun coach. <laughs> That's a fun program. And I'm not going to comment on all the fast food being consumed oh, by yeah. these Well, he said that he says he's got to get Ruth's Chris. Ruth's Chris. That's those hot plates with the butter on them. Hot, again, Delicious. there you go. Delicious. That's what you take out of Ruth's Chris with the butter. They also have steamed broccoli. <laughs> Time for some stories to start your morning. It's March Madness, which means heroes are made and hearts are broken. A couple of bracket busters yesterday, one that made... Nick upset. Four seed Arizona lost to 13 seed Buffalo by 21 points. Zona held to just 11% from three. My friend Nick Wright, what do you make of the Wildcats? Listen, I don't care that it wrecks my bracket. I I had a 16 beat and a one. I had a couple 15s winning. I didn't expect to do great in this bracket to begin with. I do care that DeAndre Ayton is not going to play in this tournament anymore. I do care that a guy that I was excited to see if he could build off of his dominance in the Pac-12 semifinal and back Pac-12 final. His dominance over the final month of college basketball season. Instead, he gets 13 shots in 38 minutes. And it's one thing to lose to Buffalo. It's another thing to get blowed out the gym in the second half to Buffalo. Yes. They're, they're With no the type of talent they have. They got four NBA players. And like, they got two guys to clear yesterday? They got no excuse. Yeah. A lot no of distractions happened. around the program, the coach, an investigation mm -hmm. with the Adidas, all the money in there. I believe this team has been distracted. This is a team that didn't reach its potential during the season, and we saw what happened in the postseason. The tournament is hard for big guys to dominate. It is a guard-driven tournament. So when you pick your brackets, Nick Wright, mm -hmm. pick the small people. Well, we're about to talk about a small person I picked. That didn't work out for me neither. All right, another big name went down yesterday when Oklahoma was knocked off by Rhode Island. Freshman sensation Trey Young. Don't get smaller than him. He scored 28 points, but in the end it wasn't enough to keep the Sooner season alive. As a reward for their stellar performance, Rhode Island gets to play Duke on Saturday. Oh, nice. All right, but let's talk Trey Young here. CC. Do you think he'd be better off coming back for another season, or do you think he'd be better off going pro? I think he'd be better off coming back another season. You could see him struggle since the calendar year turned 2018. College basketball, they caught up with him. Now, he shot a lot of bad shots during the season. He played good yesterday, but this is probably as good as he's played in like a month and a half. Low percentage shots. I believe he needs to work on his body. Like, he is undersized, and he's got a small Frame. It would be hard for him not only to guard NBA players, but I just believe that enjoy college basketball. Get your body together. All right. And then look at college. Look at look at playing one more season, then join the NBA after next season. People compare him to Steph. He obviously is not as good of a shooter as Steph is. But also remember this. Steph didn't leave Davidson after his freshman year. No. Didn't leave Davidson after his sophomore year either. He was three years in. He declared one year early. And Steph is 6'4". Se Steph is 6'4". Steph, also, I mean, Steph is also a generational talent. Yes. Like there is on the, the take a bad shot but make it scale, Trey Young is somewhere between LaMelo Ball and Steph Curry. He, he ain't one, he's not the other. He's somewhere on that spectrum. I, I don't think he's ready either. I do think, though, when you're a guaranteed top 10 pick, 
you almost always leave. The kid from Michigan State that came back, that is more the exception than the rule. I expect him to leave. His dad doesn't necessarily think he should leave now, so we'll see what he does. He didn't declare like DeAndre Ayton did. Our guy Jay Wright, friend of the show, led Nova to a big win over Radford. Villanova was clicking on all cylinders. They shot nearly 60% from the field. They were in control the whole game. Good news for me, I've got Nova in all 276 of my brackets. <laughs> Nick, did Nova look like a team that, that you thought could go all the way, that you think could go all the way? Absolutely. And of all the games yesterday, why are we picking out a 1 over a 16 to discuss? Because we were talking after the show that yesterday we didn't give Nova enough, we didn't talk about them enough in the preview part of it. Right. This is a team that, other than Virginia, in my eyes, has been the best team in college basketball all throughout the year. They have the right mix of veteran talent, a couple big-time players who have won a championship there, and star freshmen and sophomore players, and a coach who's not only a friend of the show, but one of the best coaches in the country. Villanova did what they were supposed to do. Unlike number one seed, Kansas, who ended up winning by 16, but that was a five-point game late into the second half, Villanova took control of this game eight minutes in and never looked back. And as people call him... Coach J G Q, right? Yeah. He hasn't lost since I gave him the tie bar. Oh, Told yeah. him, take off the tie bar. He hasn't lost since. Won the Big East tournament here in New York. Now first win there. They have been consistently, I think, the most dangerous team in college basketball. Not only because of their roster, but they play a style where they get after you defensively, got really strong guard play, and we know that the coach is one of the best in the business. Absolutely. All right, to the NBA now. Last night the Sixers were here at MSG to take on the Knicks. Ben uh, Simmons picked that. up his ninth triple-double of the season, joined Oscar Robertson and Magic. As the third rookie in NBA history to reach 1,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 500 assists. LeBron didn't do that. Joel Embiid was also fantastic, chipping in 29 points. You see, you were at this game. What impressed you the most? Man, Philadelphia. Joel Embiid, from the beginning. I had to holler at him at the scores, too. Hey, big fella. Hey, I'm here. I'm all about the process. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, too. But what they did in the fourth quarter, they kind of hang around. The Knicks played really well for the first three quarters, but Philadelphia exploded on them. Their ability to keep developing their younger players, and Joel Embiid is a special player. Man, you're talking about an athlete. We showed them a couple days ago with the play at half court yep. that you didn't think anyone in NBA history could have ever made. It's really impressive to watch him in person, how soft his touch is, how athletic he is, but also how engaged in the game. I loved him before the game. He shakes the referee's hands. He's shaking people's hands at the score table. Like this guy, to me, I believe he'll be one the best player in the NBA one day. That oh, title that you talked wow. about, yeah, wow. I believe Joel Embiid will be that player. That, that's, a, that's a title very few people have ever held. He certainly has the potential. With Embiid, it's always the yeah, but about health. But he's been healthy this year, and he has been as advertised. He might be your defensive player of the year in the NBA. And one thing about Philadelphia, it's very hard in the East or the West right now to talk about first-round playoff matchups mm -hmm. because they're so jumbled up at the moment they could change. Philly will be a dangerous team whether they get Toronto, Boston, Cleveland, whether they move up. Philly, the matchup problems, because the whole world's gone away from the dominant big man. And Philly's got a dominant big person. And Ben Simmons, by the way, another triple-double last night, continues to be excellent in his redshirt rookie year. And in person, he still can't shoot. Okay. okay. All right? He, he shot from 11, the ball goes 9. Okay. <laughs> He's got to shoot from 9. Yeah. Uh, on to the NFL, Browns head coach Hugh Jackson says that Tyrod Taylor is the starting quarterback for the 2018 season. And and there won't be a quarterback competition, and that's it. And there's not more to say about it until the next time he's asked about it, obviously. Like... Browns hold the first and fourth overall pick in next month's draft. Chris Carr, do you bind Tyrod as the guy, or is this just some sort of smoke screen so they figure out what the real plan is for next year? Man, I don't know what they're using. In, in matter of fact, in Cleveland, they might be smoking something. I don't know, smoke screen. Smoke, smoke yeah. screen. At the, where Hugh is now, they can't afford, afford any type of distraction. Like, right now, yeah, Ty Wright, yeah, they traded for him. He should be the starter. Well, they ain't got no one else on their roster. Right. Now, after the draft, after that first pick and that fourth pick, is he going to stay to that same theme? I believe so, and I believe that it, what it does is it sets whoever they take as a quarterback. It sets him up for success because now he does not have the pressure. Once he drafted, hey, man, you're the starting quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. No, I'm not. They have Tyrod. They're going to put me in a system. 
They're going to let me develop slowly. Now, does this quarterback start in the first um, in the first season? I believe he probably will. But Tyrod will have the chance to hold down that job, and it relieves some of the pressure immediately from whoever they select, because they will select a quarterback in the first round. And this was also this comment to me, because I agree, I think they're going to take a quarterback at number one. I think we all know if for some reason they don't take one at number one, they definitely will at number four. But they're going to take a quarterback early in the draft and within the first four picks of the draft. And that quarterback will be the guy they hope is their 10 to 15 year starter. But this is also about the guy they acquired because they don't know which quarterback they're taking yet, I would imagine. But they know what quarterback they traded for. A quarterback who had his team in the playoff hunt and got benched for Nathan Peterman. A quarterback who, despite the raw numbers being not overwhelming, but well above average, right. whose team never had faith in him. A team that was ready to get off him last year, was ready to get off him during the season last year, and then obviously did trade him despite Buffalo, by the way. Buffalo don't have nobody waiting in the wings at quarterback. Like, they traded him without having a contingency plan for quarterback and without having a top 10 pick. So when you trade for that guy, I think that's a message to Tyrod Taylor. You're our guy here. We, we traded for you for a reason. We also have added some talent on offense. Josh Gordon will be coming back. All of a sudden, like, you could, we could do something here in Cleveland. At least that's the message they're trying and to And I believe that when they, when they decided to take the option on Josh Gordon's contract, when they decided to trade for Jarvis Landry, yep. these guys don't want to play with a rookie quarterback. So this offense, they had to make some promises. Carlos Hyde, the running back, these are veteran players. Who's our quarterback? So I think it's consistency since they've traded for Tyrod. Keep the message consistent within the organization. I believe that's what Hugh did. That is a great point. All right, so the best player in the NBA does not, in fact, play on the best team in the NBA.